Hi everyone, my name is Matthew from Nofl.com. Thank you very much for visiting our site, visiting our channel, and coming back to see our YouTube series on how you can improve the writing and the speaking tasks. This week, we're taking a writing submission from our forum where we post different questions for the independent tasks of the speaking and the writing sections. If you're interested in finding out how to view those submissions, how to see the questions each week, just stay tuned to the end of the video. We're gonna show you exactly how to do that. For now, we're gonna review the question, look at a student submission, and see how they did and how you can improve on this section. So the question this week that we have has three options. As we talked about, is kind of familiar and popular to TOEFL students that have taken a TOEFL recently. What we're looking at here is a fairly average question that might stimulate the creativity in your mind or might induce some sort of panic. Don't worry, we're gonna go over it and we're gonna show you exactly what you need to do in order to get your magic number of a 24 or above or maybe even less than that. Everybody has a different score, but wherever you are in the range of the scores that you need, we're here to help. So for this question, if you were to live anywhere in the world, we have three options about which would be most important to you, language, food, or weather. Let's take a look to see what the student chose for this question. Okay, so the basic idea that we have here for this paragraph in terms of content and presentation, I think is simple, it's clear, and I think that the idea is there. It's a nice transition. However, we have a couple of points that we wanna work on, specifically uh, vocabulary, how we use idioms, how we use proper vocabulary to express our ideas, to express what we need to talk about. Sentence structure overall is pretty good, but be careful with how we're going to construct those transitions. That's going to affect our score as well. Remember that grammar is really important. Vocabulary is important too. If you don't use sophisticated vocabulary on the TOEFL, don't worry, you don't need to. It helps your score, but if you use basic, simple, appropriate vocabulary, no problem, as long as it's used accurately. The first thing that I want you to look at is how we present our essays in a grammatically correct way. Prepositions and articles are often misused or not used at all by non-native speakers. It's often a forgettable part of a sentence, and we understand why it's a very easy part to remember, but we often try to focus on the broad context of the sentence, what we want to say, and forget about those minor details. But those minor details, if they're missing at a high frequency, if they're missing all over the essay, it's going to lower your score. So if your magic number is a 24, you might be lowered to a fair range of a 22 or 23, depending on the other content. So here, we're gonna look at each line, and I want to present to you exactly what we're going to be correcting. And we wanna use definite or indefinite articles. If you're not sure, A and N is indefinite, the is definite, meaning specific or non-specific nouns. So for the first example we have here in the first line, it says, because I am too much sensitive to cold. Noun here is cold. So what we want to use here is the definite article. We're talking about something specific, the cold, okay? Or the heat, um, the winter. We're talking about something specific. Here in the next line, for example, one of many years, a few years ago. So remember, it's not something specific. It's going to be one of many. For the next one, we have the United States. We're going to be talking about a specific country, a specific group of states in this case, the United States or the United Kingdom. For the next sentence, when we look two sentences down, we see underlined in purple, terrible and in winter. So we want to use here experience, right? We say terrible experience. We're using that adjective to modify experience. But we have a lot of experiences. Some are great and some are terrible. Either way, we're going to say it's one of many experiences. Therefore, indefinite article, exactly. So we're going to say it was a terrible experience in what? Again, specific noun, the winter. The next line here where we say, so there is huge difference. Huge difference or a huge difference? One of many differences, one of many huge differences. Two lines down, I made my mind to fight hard to win from cold. So we're going to avoid using that preposition from, and we're going to say the cold. The next line, something specific. We're talking about temperature, the minus temperature. The next line after that, I was admitted to the hospital. Going from here to there, I was admitted to it. 
because of severe cold. So we're going to use the preposition of, we'll keep that, but here we want to talk about something that is not so specific, a cold. It's not that we're not talking about something specific. Cold is specific, right? I have a cold, but we're talking about a specific type of illness, okay? So we're going to say, I have a cold. And what we want to make sure that we're doing in each of these sentences is not overthinking it. Do I need to use an article? Do I not need to use an article? Just look over the sentences that you have, see where you would need to do that, correct it afterwards. If you want to create five or 10 sentences to practice each day, do that. Develop the skills and habits that are necessary to do the most accurate, precise way of writing sentences. That way you reduce the thinking time that it takes when you're actually writing. Which brings us to the next point about clear, simple, subject, verb, object sentences. For this sentence, in the first sentence, I want you to think of a template. This is probably the easiest part that you can remember and that you can transition with. So write simple sentences and remember to write smooth transitions. So for the first line, we have the reason to eliminate health risks. No problem there. But if you want to transition to explain about the reason, all we have to say is the importance of this or this is important because then we finish the first half of the sentence, then we can transition to the next half which is more appropriate, more smooth. And then we can say that I'm too sensitive to the cold. So first we'll remember that template. This is important. And then we can use the conjunction because and explain our reason. That little detail is something simple, but does affect the score. And the TOEFL grader is going to see that and mark it down. So we want to be mindful and careful of that. The next point that I want to bring up is going to be the vocabulary that we use. The first word that we see here right in the middle is acquaint. Now, acquaint to the student and to people that are watching, you might say, well, acquaint means to become familiar with. That is true. But if we're talking about weather, I can give you a more appropriate word to use. We would probably use acclimate because we're talking about climate, the weather, the type of environment that we're um, going to be living in. So if you want to talk about weather in a specific essay or a question like this one, then we're going to be using vocabulary that is associated with that. So I want you to remember that. The second type of, of vocabulary that we can use, or we want to make sure that you use something simple. If you don't know acclimate, you don't want to use it, no problem. Just say get used to. Try to rephrase words in your mind, not trying to rethink them about what you should use or not use. I want you to be a little bit more simple if you're a little bit doubtful, because that way, You'll be able to reduce anxiety, reduce stress. You won't overthink it. You won't mind it too much. And then you can move forward without focusing on these little details that do matter. But the broader perspective, the broader ideas are also very important. So we don't want to get distracted. So we can just say, I wanted to get used to the cold. And that would be fine. The next sentence here is an idiom that isn't used correctly. Try to avoid using idioms and phrasal verbs if you're not really sure about it, if you have not memorized it. Here, the student probably said, I made up my mind. That's probably what they were thinking. So to make up your mind means to make a decision, to go in a specific direction. Here, I would actually replace that with trained or conditioned. I did X, Y, and Z to my mind to do this. So here, to make up my mind, I trained it and I conditioned it and I did this purposefully. So with that being said, I want you to do a couple of things. Write out your essay, try not to overthink it, try to follow what we're talking about here and in other videos about writing simply and carefully and creatively while using truthful examples that are detailed. Afterwards, check the vocabulary, check the phrasal verbs, the idioms you may or may not have used, the simple sentences or the complex sentence structure that you have. If you find that there's grammatical errors in the articles or the prepositions or the vocabulary, rewrite them. Make them a little bit more accurate, a little bit more correct. Also, you can practice just by coming up with sentences that require articles. That way you'll be able to develop that habit. You won't think about it and it will come naturally as a skill and it'll become second nature to you once you get to the test. The same thing with vocabulary. Don't overthink it. Don't try to grab sophisticated words from your memory or your mind so you're trying to make a better essay, right? We're not trying to make a better essay. We're trying to do the best essay that we can do with the skills that we've already developed. The time to take risks is when you're practicing, not on the TOEFL itself. So try to avoid that 
and do what you already know. That's the best way to succeed on the actual test. So now I want to give an analysis of what we're looking at here, what the score would be, and how we can improve moving forward. Let's take a look how we'll do that. So this particular part of the essay would be fair only because of the grammar and the vocabulary. The content, sure, it's a little bit light. We can probably expand it a little bit more, but it's got a good foundation and a good basis. What's going to lower the score of this part of the essay is going to be the grammatical components of it. So although there's a good idea, you feel confident about what you're writing about, the vocabulary and the grammatical points we brought up is something that is going to lower your score. It's going to put you in the fair range, which is something we want to avoid. So remember the tips that we went over here, and that's going to help you to improve as you practice each day. Practice reviewing, rewriting, and developing your vocabulary as you study the other sections, as you read material, or listen to anything that is in English. That's going to be the most important skill to develop so you're able to write what you need to without overthinking it and overstressing it and trying to impress the TOEFL grader. Don't worry, keep it simple. That's the best way to really be able to express your fluency and how you want to express your ideas, which for most of you are really, really good. So that's how we want to present it carefully, logically, and smoothly with our transitions and our sentence structure. If you want your work to be reviewed here on YouTube, if you want to post it on the forum, stay tuned. We're going to show you exactly how to do that next. So if you want to visit our forum, all you have to do is click the link below, register for your account, and then you'll be able to get free access to the speaking and the writing tasks that we post each week. You can see other students work as well as post your own work to possibly get it reviewed here on YouTube. If you want to get your work reviewed by us, there's the email below. You can click on that, send us an email, and we'll be able to help you with any concerns or doubts that you might have about the test or these particular sections. So if you're taking a test this weekend, good luck. For everyone else, keep studying, keep working hard, and we'll talk to everyone very soon. See you next week.